Hello everyone, I am Deaconess West, the Young Adult Sunday School teacher. Today I will be providing the overview of the Sunday School lesson entitled, God Provides Judges to Help Moses. The lesson is found in the 18th chapter of the Old Testament book, Exodus. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for another day, for another opportunity, Father God, to praise your name to give you all glory and all honor, Father God. Lord, we just pray that you will allow your presence, that your Holy Spirit will be with us, Father God, as we study the word, Lord, that you will touch our minds, Lord, and our hearts, Father God, that we may gain understanding, and that when we gain that understanding, Lord, and we apply it to our hearts, Father God, that we will also apply it to our lives, and that we will share it with those we come in contact with. Lord, that we will not just be selfish, Father God, but we will put it into action, that we will be obedient to whatever it is that you want us to get out of this lesson, Father God. Let us not just be stagnant, Father God. Let us not just be hearers, Father God, but doers. Lord, we just praise you in advance because we know you're able. This prayer is lifted up in your son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. So as we move forward in the lesson, I encourage each of you to open your Bibles and read along. Please don't just take my word for it. Read along and know the word for yourself. So let's begin again. Exodus chapter 18. We'll be reading verses 13 through 18, which are lesson captions, perceptive conclusion. And it came to pass on the morrow that Moses sat to judge the people. And the people stood by Moses from morning until the evening. And when Moses' father-in-law saw all that he had did to the people, he said, What is this thing that thou doest to the people? Why sittest thou then why sittest thou thyself alone? And all the people stand by thee from morning until evening. And Moses said unto his father-in-law, Because the people come unto me to inquire of God. When they have a matter, they come unto me, and I judge between one and another, and I do make them know the statutes of God and his laws. And Moses' father-in-law said unto him, The thing that thou doest is not good. Thou wilt surely wear away both you and this people that is with thee. For this thing is too heavy for thee, Thou art not able to perform it thyself alone. So one day Moses' father-in-law observed Moses and he inquired or questioned Moses' activities of sitting in front of the people for such a long time. He recognized that Moses was probably exhausting a, a whole lot of energy over long periods. And more so, he recognized that the burden was just too much for Moses to carry all along. In this place, we see that Moses had great responsibility and he felt that he needed to serve the people. He knew that they relied on him as an intercessor, as a judge. And I can only imagine the obligation he felt to carry out these duties. From the perspective of his father-in-law, we see observation of, his fam of a family member. He recognizes unhealthy management and Moses traveling down a path that was not of the best interest. So in our next few verses, we'll see how to respond when we see someone in need. Verses 19 through 23 are captioned, Sound Advice. Hearken now unto my voice. I will give thee counsel, and God shall be with thee. Be thou for the people to Godward, that thou mayest bring the causes unto God. And thou shalt teach them ordinances and laws, and shalt show them the way wherein they must walk, and the work that they must do. Moreover, thou shalt provide out of all the people able men, such as fear God, men of truth, hating covetousness, 
and place such over them to be rulers of thousands and rulers of hundreds and rulers of fifties and rulers of tens. And let them judge the people at all seasons. And it shall be that every great matter that they shall bring unto thee, but every small matter they shall judge. So it shall be easier for thyself and they shall bear the burden with thee. If thou shalt do this thing, and God command thee so, then thou shalt be able to endure. And all this people shall also go to their place in peace. Now Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, counsels him to seek help. He instructed him to seek assistance from among the people. However, he was specific. He said that there were minimal qualifications that should be possessed by those he chose. Ter characteristics such as God-fearing, truthful, and hating covetousness. Covetousness meaning they shouldn't be greedy or they shouldn't be desiring the possessions of others. He also instructed Moses to train them teach them the laws and the ordinances by which Moses judged. Don't just tell them or just talk about it, but show them. Jethro told him to let his people handle the smaller issues. That made Moses available for the more heavier issues. His father-in-law made it known to Moses that by doing this, he was still serving, he was still helping the people. It was just a much lighter load for Moses himself. And it was probably less stress and he was gonna be more effective. This would also allow Moses to endure and to not grow weary so quickly. This would steer him away from getting burnt out. Let's move on, verses 24 through 26. Humble action. So Moses hearkened to the voice of his father-in-law and did all that he said. And Moses chose able men out of all Israel and made them heads over the people, rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens. And they judged the people at all seasons. The hard causes they brought unto Moses, but every small matter they judged themselves. In these verses, we see that Moses humbled himself. He took his father-in-law's advice. We have to imagine that Moses was a great man. He didn't have to listen to Jethro. He could have thought to himself, what does he know? Or he could have thought, this is my responsibility. I have to do this. I have to do this myself. I'm sure he brought it through, and in the end, he was humble, and he accepted the advice of his father-in-law. We can only imagine that this benefited not just Moses, but the people as well. Some stress was lifted from his shoulders, and I can also imagine that the people didn't have to wait so long to be heard. So throughout today's lesson, we see that Moses shows us that effective leaders accept honest observation and evaluation without taking it as a personal or personally offensive. We learn that it's also beneficial for leaders to seek help in the ministry in order to stay focused and to avoid burnout. As Christian leaders, we have to extend our ministry by training others and not being afraid of delegating. We also understand that no one person can or should handle everything. Sharing the load gives leaders time to address more tasks and to be more effective. So in conclusion, please know that the Lord can send instruction and help however he sees fit. In this example, he used Jethro, Moses' father-in-law. We also learn to be sensitive to God's instruction. We must acknowledge, we must accept, and most of all, we must be obedient. 
When we do, we honor the Lord. And the Lord works things out for our good. So to my leaders, don't be afraid to teach and train others that display godly qualities. And to the people, don't burn out your leaders. Open your heart to learn, to be trained, and to be of service. The Lord has need of many workers. The Bible tells us on a couple of occasions that the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. I thank you for spending these moments with me. I pray that you have been enlightened. Um, I hope that you've been encouraged to study God's word further and also to become more actively involved if you're not already. If you have questions or would like to discuss today's overview in more depth with me, feel free to contact me. My email address is A-L-W-E-S-T, that's A-L-W-E-S-T, 0902 at gmail.com. I'll do my best to respond quickly and hopefully provide heightened clarity. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for the message today, Lord. We thank you for your presence. Lord, we thank you for your constant provision, Father God. We thank you because we know that you always make a way. We know that you always work things out for our good, Father God. And just pray that you will continue to allow us to have open minds and open hearts, Father God. To receive your word, Father God. And to do your will. Lord, just pray that someone who tuned in tonight was encouraged to, Father God, maybe become even more active, Father God. Pray that someone who may be overly active has been encouraged to share, Father God to train, Father God, and that all training and learning is given and received in love, Father God. Lord, just pray that you will continue to be with us, continue to lead us, continue to guide us. We lift this prayer up in your son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Again, I thank you for tuning in. Be blessed.